गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर इनटू द सिक्स्थ वीक ऑफ दिस एनपीटीएल कोर्स ऑन रिस्क बेस्ड इंजीनियरिंग एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज एट द कोर ऑफ रिस्क बेस्ड इंजीनियरिंग एंड दैट इज प्रोबलिस्टिक रिस्क असेसमेंट इन फैक्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर Uh, subject that is probabilistic risk assessment i have covered in two weeks that is uh, uh, week 6 and week 7 okay so today's talk is on introduction to this subject that is probabilistic risk assessment i am professor prabhakar v varde uh, from homi bhava national institute and of course i had my long association with uh, barc over 34 years and uh, let us start the subject now that is uh, probabilistic risk assessment and introduction there is a disclaimer i have uh, designed this course basically to keep in uh, mind that you know it is meant for an academic uh, requirement and uh, anything uh, specific or any plant specific or organization specific things um it has been taken care of that they are not part of this uh, presentation uh, on uh, probabilistic risk assessment and if at all any uh, similarity or anything is found it is uh, uh, incidental uh, not to discuss anything uh, specific issues it is purely academic and r and d which i perform as part of uh, developing this risk based engineering approach so today we are going to discuss uh, background and introduction because many of you might not have even heard about this subject this called probabilistic risk assessment so little background that means uh, the uh, safety critical system like uh, uh, nuclear space and all uh, process system they have been uh, uh, been there uh, for over 40 50 or maybe more than that years and they have uh, been operating Uh, we can say uh, to a large extent safely in fact the nuclear industry has a distinction in maintaining the highest safety record um, so uh, why this uh, subject uh, that is probabilistic risk assessment and um, uh, uh, what what was the power of deterministic safety assessment that is a traditional approach uh, with little modifications over a period of time and uh, how pra or that is probabilistic i am going to use pra abbreviation for probabilistic risk assessment so how uh, pra complement or supplements the traditional deterministic approach uh, for improved uh, insight into the safety number 1 and number 2 uh, bringing or developing the applications uh, which are useful in real time whether it is uh, design operation maintenance Uh, or you know even regulation so uh, so and then ps pra uh, will discuss about it it is carried out at three levels but these three levels they are specific to nuclear plants because you know that only nuclear plants uh, as as far as i know have containments you know so contain uh, the hazard uh, so uh, that gives a way to uh, level 1 level 2 and level 3 level 3 means public domain analysis so role role of pra in risk based engineering in fact i will try to highlight what is the role of uh, pra uh, in uh, uh, risk based engineering and uh, later on we will discuss what are the additional topic they were require to uh, like uh, prognostics and health management and then physics of failure approach live testing so what were the other topics required to make this uh, bring down bring out this procedure uh, into the domain of risk based engineering so let us uh, start uh, okay let us have this background of deterministic approach and uh, it is a well accepted uh, fact that as far as in nuclear industry the deterministic safety analysis has been a pro proven approach and uh, it is established also uh, so uh, so uh, and over a period of time this approach also has been um uh, improved or modified uh, to bring in the uh, to address challenges like uh, you know best estimate component of uh, deterministic analysis and then severe accident man management program to name a few so this is how so uh, let us look at this uh, figure 
कि हाउ डिटर्मिस्टिक अप्रोच हैज एंश्योर्ड एंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू मेंटेनेंस ऑफ हाइएस्ट सेफ्टी रिकॉर्ड बिकॉज इट इज अ वेरी रबस्ट अप्रोच द फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ दिस अप्रोच इज दैट इट इज कंजर्वेटिव इन नेचर नंबर वन नंबर टू इट इज द वेन द प्लांट्स आर बिल्ट देर डिफेंस द डिफेंस अगेंस्ट द अनसे फेल्यूर इज इनहरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द एनालिसिस सो दैट इज वॉट इट इज कॉल्ड डिफेंस इन डेफ्थ अप्रोच यू नो सो एनी अनसे फेल्यूर शुड बी टर्मिनेटेड आर मैनेज इमीजिएटली सो द प्लांट शुड बी बिल्ट एंड ऑपरेटेड कीपिंग इन लाइन दिस फिलासफी एंड दैट्स वाई द सेफ्टी मार्जिन हियर इज लिटिल कंजर्वेटिव सो बट देन यू नो दिस इज अ कॉम्पिटेटिव एरा एंड नाउ इवन अवर न्यूक्लियर प्लांट्स हैव टू कॉम्पीट विथ अदर सोर्सेस ऑफ एनर्जी एंड दिस रिक्वायर्स दैट यू नो वी यूज टू द एक्सटेंट पॉसिबल बींग इन द मेंटेनिंग द सेफ्टी टू द हाइएस्ट स्टैंडर्ड दैट मीन्स इन शॉर्ट इफ आई टू से safety should always remain the overriding factor but let us use whatever margin that is available and that further ensures higher safety levels so uh, it it uh, it provides a very good and robust framework when probabilistic risk assessment and deterministic safety assessment when they uh, when they they are integrated and that lead to development of risk informed approach or risk based approach and uh, world over you will find uh, that there are uh, the, uh, there are promising developments or promising r&d work is being done to implement implement risk informed or risk based uh, framework so uh, let us uh, before we go ahead to uh, in discussion and all let us see that uh, what is the background uh, first of all as i said deterministic approach was there and uh, now we are using the Uh, risk informed approach to the extent possible whether it is a uh, plan design or operation or it is a regulatory framework okay now the term probabilistic uh, risk assessment or pra uh, let us uh, understand that pra and probabilistic safety assessment there is no distinction it is basically uh, changing uh, same technique but in some uh, some areas pra is used and some area it is psa is used procedure methodology uh, methodology m and objectives they are remain same more or less you know, and uh, in some industries uh, instead of using pra or psa uh, a qra term is used quantitative risk assessment the traditional approach to safety is we know that we have discussed uh, dsa and of course there is a integration using dsa and pra Uh, towards a, a movement towards risk informed uh, development and uh, the 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 specific advantage uh, that we are see through this integration is that many criteria which were subjective earlier uh, now uh, the, uh, the because of this uh, contribution uh, quantification element coming from pra uh, now they ha- they are finding Uh, that you know the whole safety analysis or uh, risk analysis uh, has been uh, become a systematic in the realm of risk informed and risk based approach um, and it is presentable because uh, it is a elegant framework that can uh, interconnect component interconnect system to the plant level and then any component any co- configuration change Uh, how the plant is affected that can be seen so presentation and documentation itself bring in the rational element of the uh, of the analysis and uh, and and uh, if any changes over a period of time or time then it is called uh, living uh, document so that also can be seen and the factors which are uh, responsible for change the, those thing also can be uh, seen this is a i would say beauty of this uh, integration and uh, then uh, apart from this the special advantages are uh, integration of human element uh, we know that human element is one of the major contributor uh, to the uh, events and accidents so here we are able to uh, integrate the human element 
and see how it impacts the system. I would say this is the biggest advantage because we, would, uh, we will know where to put our resources in terms of training and analysis or in fact in going depth, uh, depth of uh, uh, you know, plant, uh, plant requirements in terms of simulator um, uh, making uh, even uh, it might come to the role of AI artificial intelligence in uh, training and of course in operation also so that the critical issues can be handled of course. Uh, there is always a uh, writer that AI should be used very carefully and given the fact that nuclear industry is very conservative. So that probably will come over a period of time. And then there are some sort of uh, special issue in safety, common cause failure because our safety uh, framework is based on redundancy, diversity uh, and you know fail safe criteria and all that. But this common cause failure is an element that need to be given priority. And uh, if we have to say this remains mostly uh, at the qualitative level, level or rather, rather I would say a deterministic approach has done a uh, great job in this because there is a framework to design uh, def uh, defenses against common cause failure. And that particular activity is responsible or those features are responsible for um, uh, lowering down the possibility of deviation or incidents. And of course, uh, PRA being a quantitative approach, we have an elegant approach for uncertainty and uh, sensitivity analysis. And of course, uh, documentation uh, and all this, they make a uh, PRA as a subject very powerful because it, is, uh, it brings in an element of integration. Um, uh, a notion of uh, safety, um, when it is translated into risk, it becomes quantitative. And the beauty is again this quantification can be converted into languages, um, uh, linguistic variables or we can say fuzzy variables uh, to express uh, what we are trying to talk about the plant, how we are trying to compare different plants and how, uh, what are the areas we would like to count on for modification and uh, further work. Uh, this particular topic has been covered in uh, two weeks, that is week 7, the current week and the week 7. In week uh, uh, 6, week 6 will, will cover only the PRA level 1 and there also a limited scope because it is a very, very uh, 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 exhaustive to deal with complete uh, level 1 PRA. But at the same time, we, are, we want to understand the uh, major features of PRA, how PRA to be performed. So for that, limited scope PSA, uh, PRA uh, should be good enough uh, for academic uh, reasons. So with this, if you go to uh, fundamentals, you would have seen some one, one slide similar to this one. Uh, here, the difference is uh, what, uh, what are the basic elements and how PRA uh, becomes the uh, these elements become the ground for PRA. So let's see on the left side we have the uh, a symbolic nuclear power plant. From there the data and information is gathered, and then as a first step uh, we uh, analyze what can go wrong. Now now what can go wrong can be only said when we have what uh, how frequently an undesired event happens. So how frequently it can happen. Uh, so that is one thing and with each event what are the uh, consequences. Okay? So these two together we know uh, the model of risk uh, which I will discuss in the next slide. Um, so if we are given the likelihood and the consequences likelihood here how frequently it can happen and the consequences here we can estimate the uh, risk or we, give, uh, we can give a statement of uh, risk um, and while doing this we discover lot of plant strength additional margins and uh, we discover few weaknesses also. So then based on the, uh, based on the insight from the analysis and further uh, analysis uh, uh, we can take decision, a decision can be made. Um, what kind of uh, safety improvement program can be implemented in the plant. Now, uh, we have discussed earlier, risk is nothing but a likelihood into consequences. And this is the power of uh, probabilistic risk assessment because a mathematical element 
uh, creeps in in the analysis and when a mathematical element keeps in the analysis it supports rational it supports identifying the issues comparing the issues prioritizing the issues and then um, uh, finally making management decisions uh, what should be the next stage for uh, any uh, addressing any weak area or area which requires special attention so this formulation uh, uh, as i said is a source of power and uh, exactly this power has given way to risk informed or risk based decision making uh, which we can say is more scientific in terms of integration in terms of uh, uh, generating the rationals in terms of documentation of the study in terms of uh, review uh, that can be done for any specific plant and try to understand or interpret what we are talking about and what level we we are out by simply if now it is very easy to compare two plants which is safer otherwise a qualitative notion would not have been sufficient the one plant is saying my plant is also safer other plant is saying my plant is also safer let us use pra method and try to assess start from component level go to system level go to plant level take the data from both the plants and then tell okay uh, what is your result what are my results and then a further review where we were conservative where assumptions were i mean it provides a basis for further discussion which plant or which design is more safer uh, and it is a very enabling uh, uh, technique that way now uh, we are talking about pra and all so let's uh, have a look at uh, what it means what is the definition so here uh, i am presenting uh, one is uh, iaa definition that is from iaa international atomic energy agency uh, and glossary and then other one is our indian atomic energy regulatory board because uh, the safety document they, they provide uh, definition of the terms that are used uh, in safety assurance or safety analysis so uh, uh, we can see the first definition a comprehensive structural approach to identifying potential failure scenario constituting a conceptual and mathematical tool for deriving new num numerical estimates of risk the moment we say numerical estimates mathematics is there supporting each arguments and rationals so uh, this is the definition which is the uh, has been developed by iia and uh, our arb uh, also document also shows this definition now uh, nrc's definition is more of extension of what we saw in the uh, previous slide is basically it's talking what can go wrong and how likely it to happen and to get a mathematics of the risk so what how it reads like the nrc definition uh, uses probabilistic risk assessment to estimate risk by computing real number of number to determine what can go wrong and how likely it happens and what are its consequences thus pra provides a insight into strength and weakness of design and operation of nuclear power plant now uh, when we are developing a risk based engineering approach uh, wherein the objective is to develop application provide a robust relatively robust fr framework at the same time rationals and then go for application development because uh, to some extent pra has really paved the way for uh, development of real time applications uh, because the qualitative criteria has got converted whether it is likelihood or uh, uh, any issue or you know fail safe so it has come from common cause failure it has come from the domain of uh, uh, qualitative to quantitative so uh, now uh, how we define our definition of risk based engineering from the existing definitions are having a new element so that we are focused and we develop this subject so here uh, a comprehensive systematic and structured analytical approach to postulate the potential accident scenarios they are not really reality as on today but there is a postulation by considering numerical data on likelihood and consequences for arriving at 
quantitative estimate of risk for complex engineering system. So risk based engineering even though the uh, reference has been taken from nuclear plant because nu uh, nuclear plant only can give the ideals of safety, how it is maintained, how it is operated. So this becomes the ideal reference. Uh, so that's why nuclear, but then um, with little adoption or modification, uh, these approaches can be used to any safety critical system, whether it is a, a space, they have been already using aviation, transport um, uh, and railways. Uh, so they, they can be easily adopted. Then, then this risk-based engineering, this provides insight on strength and weakness of system and that in turn creates an improved framework for identification, prioritization, evaluation and implementation of risk-informed risk-based framework for safety improvement and further complying the national and international regulatory stipulation. Because uh, if the national and international regulatory stipulations or guides or criteria are available, then it is very easy to compare two different uh, two different plants, two different system, two different components because we are keeping uh, this assessment in the light of national and international criteria. Now, uh, as I was mentioning initially, the probabilistic risk assessment in nuclear industry, I'll emphasize here, is carried out at three levels. The, this involves assessment of plant safety um, systems to any initiating event. So that means initiating event becomes the starting point for any deviation or any um, accidents, uh, accident. So if deviations are not controlled and uh, so they, they might lead to accidents. This is how we can uh, see here. So, the objective here is assessment of core damage frequency because uh, we are remaining in the realm of level 1 PSA. Uh, so let us see what is level 1, level 2, level 3. So uh, level 1 study deals with the system analysis. That means uh, in a reactor has been built, what are the system, what are the process system, what are the safety system and how if a process system fails, how the safety system respond to these failures and bring back the plant into uh, normal op uh, to the normal operation uh, scenario. So, uh, uh, initiating events uh, are very important uh, and that's why uh, in PRA or DSA, a list of initiating event, it is, uh, it is a stipulation that it should be as complete as possible. Okay. And now there are safety systems are designed keeping in view each plant's safety framework or safety requirements. And the result of level 1 BRA is the core damage frequency, that means fuel failure. Okay? So if the fuel fail beyond a limit, then um, I mean there is a graded, uh, graded marking on CDF also, uh, starting from safe to uh, threat to safety to, uh, uh, you know, uh, delayed core damage, core damage, we'll come to that thing. But uh, finally, we have to give a uh, statement of core damage frequency okay and this is typically a value of 1.2 into 10 to the minus 6 per year now uh, there is exercise for all of you please see different plants or different engineering system and where, where nuclear system stands okay so you will find that this industry is really doing a wonderful job and that is happening because of it's a, uh, a focus that is uh, safety as a overriding uh, overriding component now, when PRA study, level 1 study is extended to, suppose, if even if it is an unlikely event, if the uh, hazard, that is, uh, we have this representation here. So, you can see nuclear plants are normally characterized by this kind of dome-shaped building and then we have a reactor located in this and then there is a cooling system circulating and cooling the fuel. This particular thing is uranium fuel and... Uh, the reactor systems which uh, ensures cooling and this is a containment environment. Uh, it is just a symbolic thing and there are so many systems are uh, located uh, in the new, uh, new reactor building and uh, now the uh, in, in respect of PSA as long as the so, so the level 1 PSA deals within this boundary that is system boundary that means the system boundary is intact. 
there are multiple boundaries. Fuel has got a uh, cover that is called cladding. Then there is a system, cooling system, uh, that, uh, that is a rubber system. Uh, second boundary, third boundary is uh, our, uh, you know, uh, uh, containment. Uh, so three boundaries here and then level of protection. So you can see uh, there is a very low likelihood that the radioactivity will go uh, outside this containment actually, you know. So level 2 PRA is the containment analysis. If the activity has come out in the containment, then what are the different scenario and what will be the uh, release uh, scene uh, potential uh, which has got potential uh, for for the hazard to go into the public domain. So this is level 3 PRA, we got, get to level. So potential release in public domain uh, uh, has been, and the input is level 2 and some additional analysis which are carried out, uh, taking into account weather conditions and you know, plume formation that means and all that. So the objective for level 3 PRA is to estimate the risk into the public domain. Now, for example, you can take this figure and for all advanced plant, you should not be surprised that 1 into 10 to the minus 10. So you can see each uh, level 1 PRA, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7 and then 10 to the minus 1. How engineering features help reducing and uh, safeguarding public domains. You know, and then even if it goes into the public domain, there is a, you can see here, exclusion zone. That means public is kept out of this order. Uh, so uh, this is, yeah, you, uh, if you know, it is almost like 1.5 kilometer or above, you know. So, uh, so all, the, uh, all the focus has gone that the nuclear plant uh, provides electricity, but public is, uh, should be kept. Uh, uh, you know, should not be exposed to any hazard, however unlikely it is, you know. So now let us go to uh, a more clarity of, uh, we'll get from this slide, uh, what level 1 PR, PRA, level 2 PRA, level 3 PRA does actually. Uh, so here uh, you take the plant data, design manuals, uh, safety analysis reports, uh, which is uh, indicated on the left side, and then you build your level 1, level 2, level 3, um, so first is level 1 PRA which uh, estimates the core, uh, core damage frequency, CDF stands for core damage frequency. You saw the statement in the previous slide, uh, right into the plant and then uh, safety design and operation and risk based application or risk informed application whatever. So this it said, uh, this it's level 1 PRA itself, uh, the traditionally the approach has been to perform first limited scope level 1 PRA. because uh, in terms of gain, uh, 80 to 90 percent uh, insights on safety you get from level 1 PRA itself. And then as a second stage, as part of level 1 PRA, external events are also analyzed uh, like flood, fire, shutdown condition, uh, uh, full power is a part of level 1 PRA, uh, low power operation. So uh, that's how we build the uh, PRA model. In level 2 PRA, the release frequency is the uh, output and inside into potential contain containment source term. There is a technical term use, wa wa source term. Source term means what is the effect of containment to grab the activity inside the containment and what will be the final source term um, which gets um, leaked out from the containment um, and then level 3 PRSA. Uh, very low likelihood that is 10 to the power minus 8 but uh, still a systematic analysis is done that you know uh, risk to the member of public and every effort is made to ensure that the, um, the hazard doesn't reach the public domain. Again I'll re request you, so you see the contribution of uh, the safety level that are being maintained and uh, in various domains uh, including process, industry or uh, energy systems that is uh, coal fired plant or any other plant and then you will see um, that uh, risk is uh, minimal you know even uh, our um, aviation space uh, aviation travel you will see you can uh, see in the public domain whatever knowledge base is available and compare that with the um, uh, nuclear system now almost like uh, uh, so many years of accumulated experience and only three events have happened that is a major events, I would say. 
the TMI, uh, then uh, Chernobyl, and then Fukushima. And then so many years accumulated experience and all that. And if you, even if you estimate the um, um, risk from these plants, it will come very less than 10 to the power, around 10 to the power minus 5 or less than that or, you know. So that one can compute easily, it doesn't require much of mathematics, you know. So uh, let us uh, proceed and see. Uh, full scope, I, I was uh, discussing full scope and limited scope. So uh, in this uh, presentation, our focus will be limited scope PRA, that is internal event. That is, uh, I am talking about lecture, uh, that is the sixth week. Uh, internal events, uh, reactor core is the source of hazard and full, full power operation, limited scope PRA. And this will capture the crux of the PRA uh, in a big way. And then um, next is when, when you talk of full scope PRA, uh, internal flood and fire, reactor pool is a source of radiation along with the reactor core and uh, external flood, uh, fire and seismic impact of external object. And the subject has got expanded uh, from shift, uh, safety to um, even security also. So if the time permits or if I can add a module, uh, we will certainly discuss uh, dis discuss the security in short, security aspect of uh, systems and or especially safety critical systems. So um, now I have been talking about core damage frequency and all, what it means actually. So when you, one does analysis, the in analysis the example definition of uh, core damage uh, can start from a very conservative definition. If these events are is not terminating into the uh, uh, safe state. Then conservatively, conservatively, it is decided. This is basically a primary or preliminary part of uh, level one PRA um, because uh, often the inputs are required to categorize the events. So, and to be on conservative side, any accident sequence not terminating into the safe state by default it is considered as core damage and later on uh, that binning can be done and all but this is the first definition because all accident sequence may not pose potential for uh, safety or to the fuel then likelihood of deviation indicating indicative of threat to safety function nothing has happened to the fuel or uh, uh, potential hazard uh, but then uh, it is a threat because safety functions or safety systems are our guardians and if, if there is any potential to their health, then it is called threat to safety functions. So this is a concern and our uh, safety philosophy takes into account how to handle this thing by emergency operating procedures or by, uh, you know that, uh, building the redundancy, diversity in design and all. So uh, you can assume that single failure will not lead to any accident or if we talk about redundancy, any, uh, the level of redundancy are kept such that one or two failure may not impact the safety of the plant. Then third is uh, likelihood of predetermined fraction of percentage of fuel damage and always in deterministic analysis it is a conservative estimate. What percentage of fuel has potential to uh, be released from the fuel domain? Uh, not going out of the reactor. So that definition also form uh, core damage because we are in the uh, in level 1 PRA, we are in the realm of system analysis. So we are analyzing the system. So we are not going out of the system. So uh, we are not going even uh, in the containment also. We are remaining in the uh, system boundary. And then likelihood of even leading to fuel failure, leading to plant damage states, input for level 1 to, uh, because this is required um, that, okay, uh, whatever given in the deterministic report, that boundary has been crossed. So this uh, becomes an input. It is called plant damage states. And this plant damage state, like initiating event for level 1, plant damage state um, for level 2. Uh, they, they, they are, they are uh, uh, part of considerations uh, for analyzing the containment scenario. Now, let us look at the our uh, core damage definition uh, uh, from PHWR uh, on ERB. So it says the extensive physical damage due to overheating of reactor core or its component leading to loss of core structural integrity. So uh, even though it is a qualitative thing, uh, definition, uh, when we talk about the frequency, a PSA comes into the picture, analyze, uh, analyze, uh, analysis systems are analyzed, accident sequence are analyzed, uh, 
an uh, input comes from deterministic side and then we are able to specifically say what uh, quantum of level uh, quantum of uh, hazard can be part of uh, various release uh, release component from the containment so uh, when it goes into the level 2 okay then core damage frequency us nrc definition an expression of the likelihood that given the way a reactor is designed and operated an accident could cause the fuel in the reactor to damage so as i was referring this is basically in in line with uh, our initial uh, idealization that uh, what can go wrong how frequently it can happen so uh, this is what and the source of definitions also i have given over here now major attributes of pra uh, that makes because finally we have to understand how uh, pra can contribute to the subject that is risk based engineering so one powerful uh, powerful insight uh, is on quantification now whatever uh, uh, whatever scenarios they were remaining in the qualitative realm like in the safety analysis if we say this this uh, possibility of this scenario because there are two systems uh, back to back uh, is unlikely it is a qualitative explanation explanation but when we, when i give it is less than 10 to the power minus 4 uh, um, there is a uh, if it is discussed uh, in a forum where everybody understand the meaning of 10 to the power minus 4 or even if in public domain if these data are compared so uh, uh, it becomes easier to communicate um, what is the risk potential from a plant which is being built next door or you know uh, in your area so it is sort of you know rational that we can generate uh, based on the quantification then second thing is integration uh, it's a very very uh, effective framework for putting the plant into one model that is the pra level 1 model wherein almost every component which has potential for uh, safety or risk becomes part of it and how failure of that component individual component affects the final result of the analysis and how uh, from component to system uh, subsystem subsystem to system and finally to the plant the integration taken place and the sensitivity sensitivity of uh, this which is part of uh, pra uh, again um, will tell you ki how important what is safety significance of that component so that is available because the whole plant is integrated uh, and it is binding all components uh, into by through uh, rational uh, or, uh, logical framework and then giving statement of um, at, at system level uh, 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 unavailability which is nothing but a, it is one of the way of indicating the reliability of the system safety system and finally uh, at the plant level what is the frequency okay and then uh, uncertainty quantification was there uh, earlier also but with the data model and you know uh, specific uh, attributes uh, uncertainty characterization is uh, one of the biggest advantage like suppose if i give a point estimate that probability of failure of this component is 1 into 10 to the minus 3 probably i am giving half information for future use because if i do it after uh, if i use this data after 5 years 4 years because of uncertainty which will creep in over a period of time or data changing or even ecosystem changing the same figure 10 to minus 3 will not be available i'll get slightly less or slightly more both the possibilities are there and this uncertainty bound it captures that information by giving upper bound and lower bound around this point estimate so we are logically or even uh, rational wise we are more correct i am giving this uh, estimate with uh, this bound so this is this is uh, uh, per se it will remain always of course we will go on fine tuning this uncertainty bound uh, over a period of time but at any point it gives it remains valid actually uh, and, and as i was telling you it is rational based because it's a representation pra model representation is rational based how system is built of uh, 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 subsystem and how systems make the plant and then how components uh, which are part of a system they are reflected in the they are uh, rational based connections in there and again the second biggest advantage is the human performance can be integrated with the pra model so 
our PRA model is sensitive to even human factor data. Of course, uh, there is a research, this is again a research topic, the uncertainty associated with human factor is relatively more uh, as is the case with common cause failure. Because of uh, common cause failure, it is a very rare failure. So, data is the, uh, for any uh, data to be uh, a good data, um, we need more uh, more than one or two or you know degree of freedoms uh, for estimations. So, uh, human factor and uh, if I had to talk about the real time record, uh, the kind of ecosystem which is there around the nuclear system training, um, uh, Almost a three to four year, a qualified engineer is trained, and then authorization is done. So from here itself, an engineer takes uh, in graduation it takes he takes four year. But again, before he is inducted and authorized uh, for duties, um, he gets three plus year of uh, training and authorization when he takes charge of the plant. So this is the kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, sincerity or you know. Um, uh, framework exists that that takes care of the uh, human factor uh, into the uh, nuclear plants and then applications. Uh, PRA has enabled because it is a mathematical in nature. It provides a development of uh, application. How frequently maintenance to be done? How frequency frequently um, in service insp inspection program? Uh, emergency operating procedure. How effective they are? Uh, what is success during emergency scenario when uh, uh, when when the systems are affected to less level but human factor is something that has to be invested so um, those kind of things can be done very easily so uh, now i think you can see in open literature um, applications of uh, risk informed risk based applications risk based isi is one of the most um, even operator support system can be uh, developed uh, using the PRA information because the, the bottom line is safety and what we want to give it to the operator in emergency condition how safety is to be ensured. So if a operator advisory system is available he has a backup advisor of course a decision he will take but then uh, their human factor can be improved because the accident scenario doesn't affect the human, uh, does affect the human in terms of its uh, cognitive capability, but it doesn't affect the computer system. So we have a good uh, friend with, uh, with the operator uh, who can support his decision or who can advise on the decision. Finally, decision making is operator's consideration. And then review. Since the, it is a documented very well, connectivity is there right from data to uh, final estimate, uh, effective review can be performed, you know. So this is where we get benefited and there can be a very good communication between peer review regulators and the PRA team, um, you know, like if anything is lacking or a, so point out, point by point where it can be discussed. As I said, the whole thing makes the elegant framework. So this is what uh, is power of PRA and that uh, translates into, it's a use into risk-based engineering. Okay, now in this lecture we have discussed um, PRA background and introduction uh, in terms of what was the deterministic background and how PRA complement or uh, supplement the, the deterministic approach and then uh, here for discussion purpose uh, nuclear plant and in few places only specific system which are there in uh, other industries also have been uh, taken for discussion and three levels of PRA. Probably if uh, a process industry wants, for them level, uh, level 1 and level 3 will be there. Containment, if a containment is not there, then uh, it will be one level 1 that is system analysis and level, uh, level 3 will be uh, consequences in public domain. Like union carbide is the uh, thing which was there and many other incidents at international level. Then limited scope level one period. I, um, this is uh, my decision that through uh, limited scope level one PRA and what comes in the level uh, limited scope level one PRA is internal initiating event, uh, reactor core is the source of hazard, and uh, then human factor and other common cause failure studies and uh, full power operation. Major uh, attributes of PRA that provide framework in risk based environment that last previous slide we have, we have seen. And with this, we conclude lecture one of uh, week six and next 
will go uh, go for the organization and quality aspect of uh, that contributes to uh, development of pra model thank you